my friends are since. A few years ago, I came across what is probably the most unusual rare lens that I have ever seen, and that is the Canon 50mm f0.75. Now, this lens has a wider maximum aperture even than the so called dream lens, the Canon 50mm f0.95, and the reason for that is because this lens was never designed to be used on standard camera bodies, rather, it was designed to be used with x ray machines. Now, the person who was selling the lens at the time had tried unsuccessfully to mount the lens on their Canon 5D, and so I thought I should take the opportunity to see if I could actually get anything worthwhile out of it. Now, I should say at the outset that I no longer have the lens, so I won't be able to show you in my hands on camera. After I'd kind of got what I wanted out of it after a year or two of experimentation, I sold it on. However, I did actually figure out a way to make the lens usable on a modern camera body and I've got lots of pictures of the lens itself as well as pictures that I took with it and since there aren't actually that many pictures out there that have been taken with this lens or information on how to modify the lens to actually make it usable then I thought it was still worthwhile doing this video. As this lens was never designed to be used on normal, regular consumer cameras, there are a bunch of things you should be aware of right from the start. First of all, the mount on these lenses are or were M39 or T mount, and when you see that, you might think, well, great, I can just screw this onto one of my old rangefinder cameras. However, that's not the case, because even if the thread mount was the same pitch and everything as, you know, an M39 camera, it, the rear element of the lens sits so far and so wide into the body that it just simply won't connect up as is to a regular camera. And that means you need to build or find or fashion your own kind of DIY mounting system to have it operational on any kind of camera. Basically, you can't just buy this lens and screw it in or get an adapter. It really does require a custom job. Now, the other things to note are that this is a fixed focus lens, which means that there is no focus ring. In order to focus it, you have to move physically in order to get the point you want in focus. It's also got a fixed focal length, which is 50 millimeter. It's not a zoom, it is a prime lens. And it's also got a fixed aperture. Essentially, it is stuck wide open at f0.75. There is no diaphragm in there that allows you to stop it down to f16 or f22 or anything like that. And this shouldn't really be a big surprise because it is kind of an unusual lens. And it also shouldn't really be a problem because, you know, this is, lens isn't going to be your kind of standard travel lens that you take about with you to do street photography shots or anything like that. So it is a particularly challenging lens to work with. Now, the other thing to note about the lens in particular is that it has a rear element which most people have modified or removed in order to get the lens to focus on modern camera bodies. And from what I gather, the reason behind this is that with the rear element installed, it simply isn't possible with the kind of film plane or the sensor that we have on digital bodies to get it to focus at all. Now, my lens doesn't actually have the rear element, or at least didn't when I got it, and I presume that at some point somebody has removed the rear element to try and get it to work. However, I've seen all sorts of different kind of configurations of the lens online, and so I can't really be sure what the original status or original configuration was. Now, the reason I bring this up is because there will be people who will point out, probably quite rightfully so, that by removing the rear element of the lens, then you naturally change the actual way the lens will transmit light. And so, strictly speaking, the lens might not actually be transmitting light at f0.75 without the rear element. It also effectively seems like a bit of a different focal length. So rather than being 50 millimeter on a full frame camera, I think that the lens is actually about 85 or 100 millimeters on my Sony A7. However, I can't really work any of that out because I haven't been able to find any of the technical documentation, but it's something to be aware of. I don't think it really matters given what the lens is in this, you know, this kind of experimental thing, but I know some smart arse will comment below saying, this isn't actually an f0.75 lens with the rear element removed, so be aware of that. That's my caveat, and I'm not going to say anything else about that. 
throughout the video. Now, when I first got the lens, I looked online to try and find out more information about it. And basically everybody I spoke to told me that it would be impossible to mount the lens on anything that would give me any kind of usable image. And there were a few example pictures kicking about from people that had kind of held the lens in front of camera bodies and stuff. But these were all kind of very low quality, soft focus macro shots. And even to this day, I haven't really seen any images of portraits or anything with this lens, apart from the ones that I've taken. So uh, I'll show you what I managed to get from it shortly. Before that though, the biggest challenge with this lens was finding some kind of mounting mechanism to actually allow me to securely mount it to my camera. Now, the first kind of adventures that I embarked upon were taking a whole set of Sony kind of extension tube adapter things and trying them in different combinations to try and get the lens at a decent length away from the camera sensor so that I could take portraits. Because if you just mounted the lens on as it was, then it would only be a macro lens, which was no use for what I wanted to do. And so after some experimentation, I managed to get the lens to a fixed focus point of one meter, which meant I could actually take portraits with it. And this picture you can see on the screen was one of the first pictures I actually took. Now, as you can hopefully see, this is actually a surprisingly good image from this lens, given that I was told by everybody that it would be impossible to get any usable portraits from it. However, I quickly became concerned about the stability of the kind of Frankenstein mount that I'd cobbled together, because really it was only held together with literally um, an elastic band. And so I had visions of it kind of falling off and smashing into a million pieces. And so I looked about for a more secure way to connect the lens up to my camera. And I came across this Russian company called RAF Camera. And essentially this is a guy who makes custom mounts for a variety of unusual lenses, including clamps, which connect up to lenses which don't have a specific compatible thread mount on there or, you know, standard lens mount. Now, I got in touch with RAF because unfortunately all of the clamps he had weren't big enough to fit my particular lens. And he very kindly agreed to manufacture me a custom made mount for this lens. And we went back and forth and you can see some of the diagrams that he came up with there. But he did this for about 50 quid, which I thought was extremely reasonable given that it was incredibly well made. And I can't really stress to you enough just how solid this mount was. And when it arrived, it was amazing because on one hand we had the clamp which let me connect it round the body of the camera lens and on the other side it had an M42 filter thread or an M42 mount and what I did was then connect that to a helicoid or a focusing helicoid, specifically a 12 to 19 millimeter focusing helicoid. And what this did was allowed me to focus the lens by moving the helicoid rather than moving my feet or physically moving the camera. And this was great because if you were trying to focus, you know, something at f0.75, any kind of slight movement would really throw it completely out of focus or you wouldn't get the point in focus that you wanted to be. And so having the helicoid meant I could be much more deliberate in my focusing than I would be if I just was stuck with moving my feet. On the screen, you can see the lens mounted on my Sony camera, specifically the Sony A7. And to do that, all I did was take the M42 focusing helicoid and connect it up to the Sony via an M42 to Sony E-mount adapter. On the final picture, you can see just how nicely the mount fitted onto the lens. It really did look like a thing of beauty. And in many ways, I'm actually quite sad I don't have it anymore because it really was a beautiful uh, bit of construction when it was all together. Now, I specifically used this lens on the Sony A7 because I tried it on my Leica M just out of curiosity and it did work, but it had so many weird issues like there was a much smaller range of focus available and it blocked the lens release button and all that kind of thing to the extent that it really wasn't very usable at all. Whereas on the Sony A7, I was able to actually get usable portrait pictures. Now, I'm sure that somebody is going to ask about sharpness even on a ridiculous lens like this. And I have to say that whilst this lens is not the sharpest lens in the world, I was able to get decently sharp images 
at the point that I focused on. Now obviously the depth of field is so huge that most of the image is blown out, but it was possible to get eyes in focus and get kind of sharp enough eye focus that the images were usable, for example, in this picture. Perhaps the bigger question that people will have as opposed to sharpness is just how the bokeh looks, because obviously that's something that people are particularly interested in when it comes to ultra fast lenses like the Canon 50mm f0.95. And on this lens, the bokeh was truly wild. It kind of ranged from giant glass-like orbs down to these really strange, busy, oval-shaped bokeh that you can see in the background of some of the example pictures here. Overall, the bokeh was intense, unpredictable and interesting. Now you might notice from some of the shots that there's a bit of a curvature at the edge of the images and this is because the rear element of the lens is concave in shape and the effect appears to be more prominent when it's mounted at a usable distance for portraits. You can see in the image on the screen that the dark line at the top and sides of the images are curved but in actual fact this was a fairly straight door frame and the curvature is also clearly visible in the bokeh where the perfect circles in the middle kind of change and get distorted as you go to the outside. And again this appears to be a byproduct of removing the rear element of the lens and it wouldn't necessarily be part of the original configuration but it's something that unfortunately you have to live with if you want to make it usable on a modern camera. Now the curvature is most annoying when it comes to portraits because people's features can be a bit stretched depending on where they are in the shot and even if you get them slap bang in the middle then certain parts of their forehead and stuff can kind of stretch out which isn't particularly great but I have found that you can shoot some really beautiful unique portraits with it specifically or especially at night where ambient light really just gets sucked into the lens. Skin is naturally smoothed out by the extreme shallow depth of field and it has a really beautiful dreamlike quality to it. At some points I think the results are much more like a kind of fine digital painting rather than a photograph and at other times the subjects kind of get lost in this dreamy futuristic world but either way the pictures have bags of character to them. Now whilst it isn't something that I particularly care about personally I did decide to try out macro shots and try and get some better than the ones I'd seen online and you can do this by adjusting the distance between the lens and the sensor and I did that by using a really small helicoid, the smallest one I could find and you can actually get some pretty interesting macro shots and with this this kind of setup, as you can see, bokeh from distant light sources sometimes ends up coming through as these giant full moon circles which are particularly beautiful. And it is pretty wild actually, the results that I got are you know not the greatest because macro shots are not my forte but it is a really cool kind of thing that you can use the lens for. The Canon 50mm f0.75 is a really interesting lens even though it is clearly completely impractical for any kind of standard video or photography work. I feel really pleased that I was able to spend time experimenting with such an unusual and rare lens and I feel particularly smug actually about the fact that my custom lens mount solution was able to give me usable portraits when everybody told me that that wouldn't be possible. Even though I did sell my copy of the lens a few years ago, I do still have a bit of a soft spot for it and I'd be particularly interested in hearing from anybody that is shot with one, especially if you've got one of the lenses that have got the RAF mount adapters because there was only a few of them made. So if you have used one of these before or if you've got any information on it that I haven't talked about already, please leave a link below and I will get back to you or check it out. For now, that's all I've got to say. If you've got any comments or tips or anything about unusual lenses then I would like to hear them because it is one of the things I like to look at along with synthesizers and all that kind of crap. Thanks for watching, goodbye.